So I'm a flight instructor for Thrust Flight. My name is Cayman Dill. Today we're going to be talking about crosswind landings. So generally when landing in a headwind, uh, it's going to be nice and easy to just kind of bring the airplane straight into the runway. The controllability of the aircraft is going to be a little bit different with the crosswind. Uh, we're going to be getting pushed, you know, maybe to the left or the right side of the runway. So we have to make more corrections to keep the aircraft uh, stable. But you never know what the wind is going to be doing on a specific day. Um, and that's why it's important that we do this. You know, if for some reason you get out to your destination or uh, whatever it may be, you need to be able to get the airplane down, uh, kind of no matter what the wind is doing. I feel like the biggest issue that I see is going to be not making large enough corrections or having trouble identifying uh, our actual position or relative position to the runway. Uh, so whether it be, you know, we're too far left to one side, too far right to one side, or, uh, you know, maybe even just not using enough rudder to keep the aircraft straight down the runway. Especially with these G1000 aircraft is going to be people like to look inside the aircraft, right? They're going to be focused inside more so than they are outside of the aircraft. So it's really just keeping your eyes outside of the aircraft on your landing. And sometimes overcorrecting, that's why, you know, when you're first learning these maneuvers, it's good to try, try it with the flight instructor because they can kind of point you in that direction of, okay, you know, it may look like we're, you know, over the runway or over our center line. So when we're flying this maneuver, we use the ailerons to keep us over the center of the runway. And then we use the rudders to keep us looking down the runway. So having that kind of second pair of eyes to help you realize the position you should be in and what kind of corrections you need to make. Uh, so I'll kind of talk about each different um, method of the crosswind. Uh, so we're going to use this right here as our runway. So as we're coming into land, uh, so we can start off with this cross control method. So what we're going to do, let's say our wind is coming from this direction over here. So we have a uh, left crosswind on our landing. What we're going to need to do is we're going to have to bank the aircraft to allow us to come in straight. So generally we would need a crab to come straight into the runway. So what we're gonna do is we would bank to kind of get that left turn going. And then we'd have to use the rudders. I guess would be nose down in our landing. So we're banking to the left, and then we'd use the rudders to line ourselves up with the runway. So we'd be in this kind of cross control forward slip motion. And we just follow that all the way down into the runway until we would touch down with the left and then the right afterwards. So we're gonna land, want to land with the upwind wheel into uh, the wind. So since our wind was coming from this left side, we would want to land with this left wheel over here first. So for our second uh, method of the crosswind um, landing, what we're going to do is we'll call this the crab method. So we're going to be crabbing into the wind. Uh, again, so our wind is going to be coming from this left side. So we're going to point our nose to the left to help us maintain that center line as we're coming down into the runway. Once we get a little bit closer to the runway, you know, maybe our ground effect, something along those lines, just actually over the runway. Now we're going to use the rudders to keep us looking down. So in this example, we would have left aileron and right rudder. So kind of a forward slip motion. Um, and then we need to maintain these corrections into the ground effect to prevent us from getting off center line. Mm. What I see frequently with students is we will enter ground effect, we'll follow all the way into the runway, we'll be coming in, coming in, coming in, and they have good corrections. And then once we enter ground effect and start that flare, all of a sudden the aileron usage just kind of dissipates. So they'll keep the rudder in so our nose will be down the runway, but all of a sudden we're getting pushed to the right side of the runway from that left crosswind. The big difference is gonna be the actual approach phase of it. Um, yeah. It's as we're coming in. So uh, with that first method, we're gonna start these crosswind corrections a little bit sooner. So we would have our bank as well as the aileron. Mm -hmm. So our nose would be uh, banking to the left, nose pointed to the right. So we'd be in this kind of tilted configuration coming down into the runway. Well, with our crab method, we're gonna make those corrections as we're actually getting over the runway. Um, that's going to be just for the overall comfortability of the people in the aircraft. Uh, but it is going to be a little bit more challenging to make these corrections in a smaller amount of time rather than, you know, starting it right here and just following this all the way into the runway till we get that left main to touch down and then our right main to touch down. So crosswinds were something that I struggled with a good bit. Uh, I'd say even all the way through my private, uh, something that I've learned to uh, kind of work on more as a uh, flight instructor. It could have been focused on a little bit more when I was first going through, but you kind of need that perfect scenario, right? Not often do you have the crosswind, but it can't be too strong of a crosswind. It's at a certain point, it's just going to become overwhelming, right? And landing it is as it is, is already going to be one of the hardest things that we do. I'd say, if not the hardest thing that we do when flying aircraft. So once you finally start to get these steps together, you know, you can finally get the airplane down. Now we throw in a whole nother element to it and it can really make it complicated. I think the biggest thing for me, uh, when I was first learning, I was initially taught the cross control method or the forward slip method. So starting on this maybe three or so uh, mile final and then holding this bank as well as the rudder to just follow a stable path into the runway. Once I started 
working on, or once I kind of transitioned, you know, different instructors uh, teach different ways, started practicing the crab method, and that just seemed to kind of click a little bit more for me. So that's generally how I teach the crosswinds. Uh, hopefully something that I've said today can help you on your journey in aviation. Um, get a little bit further with these, uh, and today specifically with our crosswind landings. So feel free, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.